Welcome to Geek Archaeology, where we dig deep into anime of all eras. Today I want to talk about mecha series. Yes, giant robots stomping across the land, but not the shows you've probably already heard of. In this video, I'm going to look at six mecha series that made a mark on the mecha genre itself, but that are mostly unknown by American fans today. We're going in chronological order, so let's start all the way back in 1974 with Getter Robo. Now, Getter Robo is not the first mecha series, nor is it even the first mecha series by its creator, Go Nagai. That would be Mazinger Z. Getter Robo is the first combining mecha series, where multiple vehicles all combine together to form the mecha, you know, like Voltron. Now, when I say they combine together, that's a bit of a stretch. Yeah. Now, in fairness, this was 1974. There was no way they could make toys that actually combined into a robot form at a price, kit, a price point most kids could afford. So you bought the vehicle toys separately from the giant robot toys. In any event, Get a Robo is also interesting because it started establishing some tropes. Who pilots Get a Robo? Why a heroic guy, a big guy, and an aloof guy, of course. It's also fun because it's very much a Monster of the Week show, with the heroes facing a usually goofy-looking monster or mecha in every episode. How will they get out of this one? Oh, the same way they did it every other time. Right. Let's move on to a highly regarded anime series by Yoshiyuki Tomino that was a major inspiration for Evangelion. No, I'm not talking about Gundam. I'm talking about Space Runaway Ideon from 1980. A lot of people don't know this, but the original Mobile Suit Gundam was not hugely popular when it originally broadcast. It had a devoted fan base, but the money, the big money, didn't really start to roll in for a while, so everybody on the staff pretty much moved on after that. That included director Yoshiyuki Tomino. His next work, Space Runaway Ideon, had nothing to do with Gundam, and was a dark tragedy. Instead of the clear-cut war of Gundam, Ideon focuses on a ragtag group of humans desperately running away from homicidal aliens where a massively powerful and barely understood war machine annihilates soldiers who barely understand why they're fighting in the first place. It also features Studio Sunrise just as they were starting to dramatically improve their action animation. The battle scenes in Ideon feature complex movement and camera angles with mecha zooming in and out of frame. Some of the shots even rival those of Macross, which didn't come out until two years later. In a way, Ideon proved that the serious, long-form storytelling and complex motivations of Gundam could work in other shows. It really started to prove the real robot formula, although that really didn't get established until later. Also, Ideon is dark. Dark, dark, dark. Really dark. Be prepared for that. I should also mention that the TV show has a very controversial kind of non-ending, which is rewritten in the Apocalyptic 2 movies. Kind of like another mecha show I could name. Just be ready for that. Okay, enough of this seriousness. Let's move on to Space Vietnam with 1981's Fang of the Sun, Dogram. Okay, yeah, Dogram is pretty serious too. Its opening scene shows the title mecha sitting destroyed in a desert while one of the characters sees the ghosts of the other characters. So, yeah, it's not a particularly cheery show. And that's because Dogram was another Sunrise series made to see whether the real robot subgenre they'd invented with Gundam had serious legs. This was their second conscious attempt at a real robot series. Ideon was kind of there, but not really intended to be real robot in that sense. And if Gundam's war was patterned off of World War II, Dogram's conflict is patterned off of the Vietnam War. Without getting too deeply into spoilers, the protagonists are guerrilla fighters on a remote planet, cut off from the rest of the known universe, fighting against an oppressive government. But beyond those setting similarities to a certain war that was very recent for the time, there's a relentless oppressiveness to Dogram. Oh, it's not all death and destruction, there's some comedy here and there, but overall it has a distinctive seriousness to it. But more importantly for this video, Dogram proved that the real robot idea could be applied to more settings than just Gundams. Now, Dogram was a Sunrise series, but it wasn't by Gundam's creator, Tomino. Tomino was working on his own shows. In fact, in 1983, he came out with a bit of a shocker, the first fantasy mecha series 
Ara Battler Dunbean. You heard me right, Dunbean is set in a fantasy world of insectoid giant robots, or technically living robots, or living suits of armor, whatever. And this is a Tomino series, so despite the fairy who appears to be wearing a school swimsuit, it's got all the political machinations and death and destruction you'd expect from Kill em All Tomino. Not only that, but it starts with the seemingly ordinary Japanese protagonist on his sweet 80s motorcycle ride, suddenly getting transported to a fantasy world in which the series takes place. That's right, this is an Isekai series. In 1983. As far as I know, this is the first Isekai series, right here. But it's by the creator of Mecha, and it has giant insectoid Mecha in it. What's not to like? Unfortunately, Dunbean became more or less a footnote in mecha history in Japan, unlike another series that came out the same year that is surprisingly unknown in the West, 1983's Armored Trooper Votoms. Now, if the conflict of Dogrim was patterned off Vietnam, Votoms is more inspired by the trauma of that war on its soldiers. Votoms follows a veteran of a previous war, thrust into new conflicts in his powered armor, despite how tired he is of fighting. And this is worth noting, the MC here is a veteran soldier, not a random Japanese teenager, and so are a lot of his enemies. This makes Votoms feel like a war story in a way that the other shows in this list don't. You can feel the very act of violence wearing down the characters, changing them in sad and ugly ways. This gives Votoms an unusually grim tone by anime standards, where any levity is more a sardonic respite from all the violence and death. So let's end this list with something a little lighter in tone, shall we? For our last influential but forgotten series, I'm going to fast forward almost a decade to a show voted by readers of New Type magazine as the best anime ever made, Neon Genesis, no, Martian successor Nadesico from 1996. Now I haven't found clear evidence of this, but apparently Nadesco is originally going to be just another mecha show. Hapless teen boy pilot, xenophobic alien race determined to destroy humanity, serious commanding officer types, emotionless blue-haired girl, and so forth. Apparently, during one of the planning meetings, the director looked at all this, then looked at the rest of the staff and said, This is so generic, it could almost be a parody of Mecca. What if we made it a parody of Mecca? So yes, Nadesco is a parody. The MC doesn't just want to run away. He's happiest when he's cooking in the kitchen. He wants to be a cook. The crew of the battleship end up spending all their free time watching another mecha show in universe. But Nadesco isn't just a parody. It's also a complete mecha series. There's a plot going on, including, no spoilers, some actual dramatic twists. Indeed, it's that rarity of that drama that makes it hit even harder, and that allowed for a lot of the more ridiculous mecha series of recent, uh, recent uh, years. So there you have it, six mecha series that fans over here in the West don't really talk about much, but still left their mark on the industry. And of course, these aren't the only mecha series we're talking about. The others I probably just haven't seen yet. There's so much anime to watch.